In probability, we come across many terms like random experiment, sample space, event, and so on. So before we start the discussion of probability, let's have a brief idea about these terms. Let's start with random experiment. Random experiment. It's a process which results in an outcome from a set of possible outcomes. Something like tossing a coin. Here we have two outcomes, that is head or tail. But when we do this task, it's sure that we get one of the outcome. Similarly, when we throw two dice, you get two numbers, maybe one, two, or two, three, or four, five, any two numbers between one to six. But it is sure that there will be an outcome. So performing a task which results in outcome can be thought as a random experiment. The next is sample space. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. For example, if we take the random experiment tossing a coin, it has two possibilities that is head or tail. So we can say the sample space of throwing a coin is a set with two outcomes that is one head or tail. How about this? Throwing two dice. In this sample space, we may have one one or one two or one three and so on. Now, how many possibilities are there? If you think about it, the first die can have any one of the six numbers, and even the second die can have any of the six numbers. So, six into six, so there are 36 possible outcomes, and the set of these 36 possible outcomes will become the sample space, and these are those. The next is event. An event is a subset of a sample space, something like if we consider the random experiment tossing a coin, we could define an event like getting a head. So here E is set with element H and you can clearly see this is a subset of the sample space of tossing a coin. And for the random experiment throwing two dice, I could define an event like getting the sum of the numbers on the dice is 10. So E will have three possibilities that is 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4. In each case, if you add both, the sum is 10. And this is a subset of the sample space for throwing two dice. The next is equally likely events. Here, the chance of occurrence of the event is same. Something like, let's say the experiment is single toss of a fair coin. Fair in the sense, one side is head, the other side is tail. And let's define an event on this. Maybe some A, getting a head, and B, getting a tail. For this random experiment, the sample space is head or tail and A is getting head so the set is H and here it is tail so T. And we can say that these two events are equally likely because the chance of getting head is 50% and the chance of getting tail is also 50% and both have equal chance therefore they are equally likely. Sometimes this logic may not work for every event so something like here we have an experiment, picking a ball from a bag with six blue balls and four red balls. Let's define an event A as the ball we picked to be blue and event B is the ball we picked is red. If you carefully observe, we have six blue balls but there are only four red balls. So when we try to pick up a blue, there are 60% chances of getting blue ball and 40% chance of getting the red ball. Therefore, these are not equally likely. Mutually exclusive events. Here, the occurrence of one event rejects the occurrence of the other event. Something like, consider the experiment tossing a coin and let's define two events. Event A is getting heads and event B is getting tails. The sample space for the experiment will be head or tail. Let's say we get head. It also means that it cannot be tail or if it's tail, it cannot be head. Which means that if this happens, this will not happen. And if we try to represent this mathematically, we can say it as event A and B are basically sets. So I can say A and B, and if you take the intersection for these two sets, it has to become null. Then these two events are called mutually exclusive. Let me give you an example which is not mutually exclusive. Here we have an experiment throwing a die. And there are two events, A is getting an even number and B is getting a prime number. The sample space for this experiment will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Getting an even number means it's either 2, 4 or 6. And prime number is 
2, 3, and 5. Let's say for the event day, we get the number as 2. That is this. Now, by getting this over here, does it anyway stop getting it over here? No, it cannot. 2 can happen here also. If an outcome is possible in both the events, then they're not exclusive. Or in mathematical notation, we could say A intersection B will not be null. And here in this case, it's actually equivalent to 2. Exhaustive events. It's basically the union of all the events which results in the sample space. Something like, consider the experiment throwing a die. It has a sample space 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And let's say there's an event A, which is getting an even number, which is either 2 or 4 or 6. And event B is getting an odd number, which includes 1, 3, and 5. And by looking at the combination, we can say these two together will become an exhaustive event because the union of these two events results in the sample space. The next is complement of an event. It is a set of outcomes that are not in the event. We can formulate this as A complement is from the sample space, remove all the elements of A. To understand this, let's take the previous example. Here A is getting an even number. So for this, we can define A complement which is a sample space minus a, that is from the sample space, remove these 2, 4, and 6. The leftover elements are 1, 3, and 5, which becomes the complement of this. Similarly, for b, the complement will be 2, 4, and 6. And one more important point to note, events are basically sets. So all the rules which can be applied to sets can be applied to the events and the probability, which we'll be seeing a little more in depth in the upcoming videos.